From a boy to a big responsible who was in charge of caring of his young brothers while his mother's working. To a young man who was included in many different jobs which ended in the same way. To a 60s man full of hope. Life's difficulties did not make him give up. The result is the owner of the most famous chain of restaurants in the world. Colonel Sander is probably the most recognizable icon in fast food history. However, most people don't know much about the man himself. So, who is Colonel Sander? How did he get included in many jobs? And what is the reason for his fame? These questions and even more will be answered in the video that we will be representing to you in this episode. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications. At the age of 65, when most people were looking at slowing down and retiring, after being included in too many jobs and bad experiences, Harlan David Sanders began Kentucky Fried Chicken. We are lucky that Colonel Sander did not believe in that age that the future belongs to the young, or we would never enjoy KFC today. Colonel Harlan Sander might be famous today, but he came from a humble beginning. Let's begin with his childhood. This man was born in 1890, in a farm in Henryville, Indiana. When he was 5 years old, his father came home with fever. He was too young to understand that his father was dying, but he will always remember that moment. On the same day, his father passed away. After the death of his father, the mother was forced to take work where she could. For this reason, she has taught the boy the way to cook, where he wakes up every morning to cook breakfast for his young brothers and take care of them while his mother is at work. All this responsibility made it harder for him to concentrate and study, and for that reason he dropped out of school in the 7th grade and left home to go work as a farmhand. At 16 years old, he joined the US Army. After one year, he was discharged honorably. Then he got hired by the railway as a laborer. He worked a while in this job, but he decided to leave and started searching for a new job, which would make him happier and more comfortable. When he reached 18 years of age in 1908, having a stable income, Harlan Sanders married Josephine King. He had three children, a son, Harlan Jr., who died at an early age, and two daughters, Mildred Sanders Ruggles, and Margaret Sanders. After a while, he was fired for insubordination. His wife Josephine left him to take the children back to her parents' home. Her brother later wrote Harlan the letter where he said, she had no business marrying no good fellow like you, who can't hold the job. Over the years, he tried a lot of other jobs, but did not find any which he could work at for a long time. In 1930, Sander found himself in a gas station in Corbin, Kentucky. Here, he first served travelers the recipes that he had learned as a child. Fried chicken and other dishes such as steaks and country ham. His recipe, which includes pan-fried chicken, garnered him something of a reputation in the region. After a few years when Harland was already in his 40s, he had a little capital accumulated over the years. For a long time, Sanders was in despair. Most of his life already passed, but he still was a man who made no difference and did not have enough money to live in pleasure and wealth. He was disappointed in life and of course he wanted to change it. Sanders decided to purchase the gas pumps and set up his own restaurant, with six tables. By 1936 this had proven successful for Sanders, to be given the honorary title of Kentucky Colonel by Governor Robbie Lafone. In 1937 he added a model across the street, naming it Sanders Cars and Cafe. In the same year, he expanded his restaurant to 142 seats. Because he felt it took too long to cook, his original restaurant did not start out serving fried chicken. That did not come until later, when he developed his secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices. In order to increase his income, Harlan bought a pressure cooker. He was one of the first chefs to assess the advantages of pressure cookers. Usually, it took about 30 minutes to prepare chicken. But now its time has been reduced to 9 minutes. That meant the customers did not have to wait for so long for a meal and they increased the number of orders. In 1949, Sanders and Claudia Liddington decided to marry. She was Sanders' secretary from 1930. She was the woman who helped him to achieve his purposes. The Sanders Court and Cafe was popular with travelers on their way to Florida throughout the town of Corbin, Kentucky. 
but when Interstate 75 was built in the 1950 bypassing the town, Sanders was forced to retire and sell the restaurant. In 1952, living on his 105 bucks a month social security benefits check, Colonel Sanders embarked on his last career. It was time for a new business tactic. Sanders began traveling across the United States, visiting potential franchise restaurants and offering them his chicken recipe for 4 cents on every chicken sold. In exchange for Sanders' secret blend of herbs and spices and the right to feature his recipe on their menus and use his name and likeness for promotional purposes. It wasn't an easy life. It was a slow, expensive and humiliating way to pursue business partners, especially considering he spent that time living out of his car. He met a friend who was the operator of one of the city's largest restaurants. His name is Pete Harmon. In 1952, Sanders had already franchised his recipe to Pete Harmon. The KFC name was coined by Don Anderson, who was a signed painter hired by Pete Harmon. The KFC name was a way of differentiating Harmon's restaurants from competitors. For Harmon, a product from Kentucky was exotic and evoked imagery of southern hospitality. The famous phrase, it's finger licking good, was trademarked by Harmon, which eventually became the company-wide slogan. After years of failures and misfortunes, Sanders finally hit it big. By 1963, there were 600 KFC restaurants making the company the largest fast food operation in the US. KFC expanded internationally and he became a millionaire in 1964, at age 73, when he sold the company for $2 million, which makes $15.3 million today, to a company of investors led by John Brown Jr. and Jack C. Macy. The contracts included a lifetime salary for Sanders and the agreement that he would be the company's quality controller and trademark. Even today, Sanders remains central in KFC's branding and his face still appears in their logo. His goatee, white suit and western string tie continue to symbolize delicious country fried chicken all over the world. In 1965, Sanders bought and lived in a bungalow in the Lakeview area of Mississauga. He remained the company's symbol after selling it. Traveling 200,000 miles a year on the company's behalf and filming many TV commercials and appearances, Colonel Sanders retained much influence over executives and franchises, who respected his culinary expertise and feared when a restaurant or the company varied from what executives described as the Colonel's chicken. One change the company made was to the gravy, which Sanders had bragged was so good that it will make you throw away the darn chicken and just eat the gravy, but which the company simplified to reduce time and cost. As late as 1979, Sanders made surprise visits to KFC restaurants, and if the food disappointed him, he denounced it to the franchise as goddamn slop, or pushed it into the floor. When Sanders was in his 80s, his solution was somewhat different. He and his wife Claudia opened a new competing restaurant that served food that raised to the Colonel's standards. The restaurant known as Claudia Sanders, the Colonel's Lady Dinner House, would sell sit-down style dinners of ham and lobster in addition to chicken. The Claudia Sanders Dinner House still exists and you can visit it in Louisville. It is the only non-KFC restaurant that sells a fully authorized version of the original Colonel Sanders fried chicken recipe. He kept working until a month before his death. At age 90, on December 16, 1980, Sanders passed away from pneumonia. Flags were flown at half staff for his funeral which was attended by over a thousand people. His body was ordered to lay in state at the Kentucky State Capitol before he was buried in Louisville, Kentucky. In the wake of Sanders' death, KFCs came at the cost of the destruction of the colonel's image. KFC's founder became little more than a marketing tool, and Sanders' family now has nothing. The colonel's death was only the beginning for some Japanese baseball fans. Here's the short version of the story as reported by NBC News. Osaka's baseball team, the Hanshin Tigers, won the national championship in 1985. Tigers fans often jump in Osaka's the Thornberry River to celebrate wins. After the championship, some rowdy fans decided that a statue of Colonel Sander outside a local KFC looked enough like the Tigers' American first baseman Randy Bass, that he should go into the river too. So they threw the statue in the river. Since that time, fans feel the team has been played by the curse of the Colonel, which is to say, the Tiger have not won another championship. The statue was recovered from the river in 2009, but it had deteriorated pretty significantly in 24 years. The colonel was missing his legs, 
hands and glasses when pulled from the murky water of the Detonbury River. The legs and right hand were recovered the next day, but the left hand and glasses are still missing. Tigers fans assert it is because of these still missing pieces that the curse is still in place. At that time, there were around 6,000 KFC locations in 48 countries. Presently, there are more than 24,000 KFC restaurants in over 140 countries and territories around the world. If you are overwhelmed by rejection or discouraged by bad luck, remember the story of Colonel Harlan Sanders, 